Hello, and welcome to our learning unit, Correlational Research Methods. We have five learning objectives for this unit. The first is interpret a scatter plot. In this unit, we'll learn that a scatter plot has both a y and an x axis, and it is a graphical representation of our uh, data. On the y axis, we see number of alcoholic beverages consumed, and on the x axis, number of spelling errors made per paragraph. By looking at the scatter plot, we can see, well, who consumed the most alcoholic beverages? Why, this person right here, who also, interestingly enough, made the most spelling errors. And who consumed the least amount of alcohol? This person here, who made fewer errors. A scatter plot also allows us to make predictions. That is, by looking at this, we can see that those people who drink the most also tend to make the most errors. Our second learning objective is to report the strength, direction, and effect size of the relationship based upon the correlation coefficient. Most commonly used correlation coefficient is Pearson's R, which ranges in value from negative 1 to positive 1. A correlation coefficient of 0 means no relationship between the two variables at all. For example, shoe size and high school GPA. A positive correlation means that uh, there's a positive correlation between the two variables, such as how much you exercise and your health. A negative correlation means uh, that there is a negative relationship between the two variables, uh, such as how much money you spend and how much you save. Now, a correlation coefficient and a scatter plot, these are the ways that we can use to represent the strength and direction of a relationship between two variables. The other aspect for this learning objective is to be able to determine the effect size of a relationship. That is, how good is this correlation uh, when you want to make predictions? Let's say I don't tell you the number of alcoholic beverages consumed by my participants, and you simply have to guess the number of spelling errors they made. Well, in that case, your best guess is to make four is to guess four and a half each and every time. Now, sometimes you're going to guess uh, four and a half, and the person will have made more spelling errors. That is, they are at the top end of our distribution. Other times you're going to guess four and a half, and we'll be pretty close to right on. And other times you're going to guess four and a half, but this person will have actually made much fewer spelling errors. And so this is what you guess each time, and the further the value is away from your guess, the bigger the error. So there's lots of error here between what you guess and what actually occurs. Now what if instead I allow you to use the correlational information? I'll actually tell you the number of alcoholic beverages consumed by that person. Now you get to use this best fitting line. You'll notice much fewer errors are going to be made here, but some errors will still be made. You use the best fitting line, and the person may have made more spelling errors than you would have thought. Or you'll use the best fitting line, and they'll be right on. Or other times you'll use this best fitting line and the person will actually have made uh, fewer spelling errors than you would have thought. So there's still some error, but uh, less. Well, if we want to describe how strong is this correlation uh, in terms of making predictions, we call that coefficient determination. And to get an idea, we square R. So if R is 0.5 and you square it, 0.25 is the coefficient of determination. And it tells you the percentage of the variance that is accounted for by knowing the correlation. So in this case, it would say that if R is 0.5 and the coefficient of determination is 0.25, that 25% of the variance is accounted for, but there's still 75% of the variance remaining due to things like their educational level, how often they read, do they do crossword puzzles, and other things. Okay, our third learning objective is to determine whether data should be analyzed using Pearson's R or Spearman's Row. Um, first off, uh, here are some examples of scatter plots. This is linear, this is like a zero correlation, and this is curvilinear. If you see a curvilinear correlation, do not analyze it with either Pearson's R or Spearman's row. Simply report the scatter plot. Pearson's R and Spearman's row are not set up to analyze it correctly. Before analyzing the data, you want to take a look at each of your variables to see how they're distributed. Normal, regular, or strongly skewed. If a variable is strongly skewed, or if the variable is ordinal, then um, you will have to use Spearman's row when analyzing the data. So if either one of them are strongly skewed or ordinal, it's Spearman's row. On the other hand, if uh, both variables are uh, scale, um, that is equal interv intervals, and if the variables are normal or at least not strongly skewed, then Pearson's R is good and it's uh, a good way to go. Our uh, next learning objective is share common issues and best practices for conducting uh, correlational research, and we'll be covering this in our unit. And our last learning objective is to describe the possible interpretations for a correlation between two variables. Uh, remember, correlation does not imply causation. There can always be a third variable accounting for the relationship between the two variables. But again, it's possible that one variable could be causing the effect on the other one. All right. Those